In the field of regenerative medicine and anti-aging, peptides are the hot topic. So what I wanted to do in this video is give you an overview of what a specific peptide is and does, and that's GHK copper peptide. So let's take a look at this article and then that way I can give you an overview of what it does and why you too should be really excited about it. So this is an article from the International Journal of Molecular Science. It was published in 2018, and it's written by Lauren Picard and Anna Margalina. You'll hear me talk about Lauren Picard later on in more depth, but just so you know, he is the one who literally wrote the book on GHK copper peptides. And in this particular article, he's going through a lot of the research uh, that he has done himself, but also many, many other uh, research laboratories and uh, researchers have done over a period of 30, 40 years since copper peptide was, was uh, discovered, I think, in 1975. This article talks about the regenerative and protective actions of GHK copper peptide, especially in the new light of gene data. So let's break this down into a couple different areas. Regenerative is important because if you get damaged tissue, you want to be able to regenerate and heal that tissue. Protective actions is important because it prevents, in this case where I'm going to show you, it prevents skin that might be thinning due to aging. It prevents it from um, bruising easily and getting cut and not being able to heal. And this happens a lot as um, people age. Not us, right? <laughs> as other people age, we notice that their skin gets kind of thin. It's like it's called paper thin or it gets kind of like uh, you can almost see through it. So it helps the uh, proteins that are in the skin and protects them and prevents that kind of damage. And then the new gene data, this is especially exciting because what we're learning is that GHK copper peptide ha can regulate thousands and thousands of genes in the body. And this gets us into the world of epigenetics, which which is probably one of the most exciting areas of regenerative medicine and anti-aging. Because if we're able to change the way genes express themselves, then we can prevent things. I wanted to just come back here for a second because when we're talking about the world of epigenetics, this is a really exciting area. So there are things that we can do that we have control of, lifestyle choices, foods that we eat, hydration, whether we smoke or don't smoke, that can influence whether or not a gene turns on or does not turn on. So the field that I'm in, I'm an acupuncturist. I see patients that have gone through some of the genetic testing that's very specific, looking for maybe family um, incidences of breast cancer. And so they wanna know if they have that gene or Alzheimer's, um, the MTHFR gene mutation, those kinds of things. And sometimes they get their, their, their um, reports back and it can be devastating. So to know that there are things that you can do or take or try that will help to not turn on those genes or give you the best chances to not have those genes express themselves and go in the direction of that particular condition can be very empowering. So when we're talking about GHK copper peptide, I'm going to show you at the end of this article, all the things that have been learned about how it affects epigenetics, how it can turn on thousands of genes that are very healthy and turn off thousands of genes that are very unhealthy. So I just wanted to kind of pause and give you that little brief background about epigenetics and why it's so exciting. All right, so here we are back in the article. So we're talking about the human peptide GHK, which just stands for glycine, histidine, and lysine. Those are the three amino acids making up that peptide. And, and the only reason to really be aware of this and, and be able to differentiate it is because there are other copper binding peptides and they have different effects. So AHK copper peptide, for instance, is a different one I'm gonna be telling you about in another video. For right now, let's just focus on this one. So let's take a look at some of the multiple biological actions that we already know about 
for GHK copper peptide. So it stimulates blood vessel and nerve outgrowth, increases collagen, elastin, and glycosaminoglycan synthesis. Trust me, that's important. <laughs> and it also supports the function of dermal fibroblasts. So these are all things that have to do mostly with the skin. I think if I just say collagen to you, you'll probably get a pretty good idea that that's a good thing. But collagen is all over in the body. It's in organs, it's in connective tissue. It's not just in the skin. It's a very, very important thing to know that we have a, a peptide here that can help to increase that. GHK has also been found to possess powerful cell protective actions, such as multiple anti-cancer activities and anti-inflammatory actions. So in my job as an acupuncturist, I'm off, often treating people in pain. So knowing that it has the ability to help uh, wounds heal and uh, is, is important in the anti-inflammatory process is really important. But let's take a look at some of the organs that are also affected. It's lung, connective tissue, bony tissue, liver, and stomach lining. And these are just a few of them. So this is a very prevalent substance that has actions, multiple actions throughout the entire body. So let's just take a look at a list of what we know GHK copper peptide can do. I like the way that we call it this small, naturally occurring tripeptide present in human plasma, and that it can also be released from tissues in case of an injury. I say I like it because it makes it sound like it's just this small, unassuming little peptide that's just circulating around in the body, and oh yeah, it can be released if you get a little bit of an injury. <laughs> but when you see this list, you're gonna see how amazing this, this uh, little substance is just kind of hanging around can do. So let's take a look. Tighten loose skin and reverse thinning of aged skin. Repair protective skin barrier proteins. Improve skin firmness, elasticity, and clarity. Reduce fine lines, depth of wrinkles, and improve structure of aged skin. Smooth, rough skin. Reduce photo damaged, mottled, hyperpigmentation, skin spots, and lesions. Improve overall skin appearance. Stimulate wound healing. Protect skin from UV radiation. Reprodu or, sorry, reduce inflammation and free radical damage and increase growth and thickness of enla and enlarge hair follicle size. So if you or someone you loved was concerned about skin cancers, wouldn't these kinds of benefits be something you'd want them to know about? right? Wouldn't you want them to have a, make sure that they had enough copper and enough GHK in their body so that they could uh, stimulate and help in protecting your skin, not just from aging, but from the things in our environment and our foods that can cause uh, increased aging. As an acupuncturist, I'm excited when I see that it stimulates wound healing and is important for the inflammatory response because I know those things help people get out of pain. But as promised, there have been a number of studies on GHK and gene expression. It's estimated that GHK can affect anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 genes in our body. And what they're finding is that some of the genes are stimulated to turn on and some of the genes are suppressed. And the genes that they're stimulated to turn on tend to be protective that will produce healthy benefits and reduce the effects of aging, while the genes that are suppressed are the ones that would be considered unhealthy and would cause poor outcomes and that kind of stuff. So you can see it's not only increasing the genes that make us healthier, it's decreasing the gene expression of those genes that would make us age more quickly. So it has this astronomical kind of benefit in the area of gene expression. And I'm not going to go into the specific ones. I'll just point out a few here. But also GHK improves skin regeneration. And here's some of the studies that show that. There are now um, GHK copper in cosmetics, so in topicals that you could put on, and they've done studies to show that it increases collagen production and helps with the um, blemishes and that kind of stuff. Um, we've seen a dramatic increase in wound healing activity in, in um, unfortunately, the, some of these studies have been in animals. Um, simulation of blood vessel growth and nerve growth. I mean, remember, there was a time when we believed that nerves couldn't grow or couldn't reproduce or couldn't really heal. And so this is exciting here. Pr promotion of nerve outgrowth, nerve fibers. Here's one of the, the studies on uh, the turning on the genes in a specific 
um, in, in specific neurons here. So that's exciting. Antioxidant and anti-inflammatory action. So we know that when you get rid of oxidative stress and inflammation, you are necessarily then decreasing aging because if cells can remain healthy longer, then that's going to extend the life of everything, the organ that they're in and, and everything else. So that's exciting there. Uh, lung COPD and acute lung injury. I mentioned before that uh, GHK copper has a particular affinity for lung tissue and, and what's going on in there. So it helps with COPD. At least these studies have shown that. The blocking of cortisone effects. So one of the great things about cortisone is it's a great anti-inflammatory, but unfortunately when it's used topically, it can really thin the skin and that can be very dangerous because then the skin won't heal. So if you think about um, people with diabetic ulcers or something, you might want to use the cortisone to decrease the inflammation, but they already have poor circulation. And so the, the skin, the wounds aren't going to heal very easily. So knowing that there's something that can block those skin thinning effects of cortisone is GHK copper peptide. So that's useful. Uh, the suppression of fi fibrinogen. So that's a clotting factor. And so for if you want to prevent clots and prevent strokes, then uh, having something that can modulate that is important. Skin remodeling and anti-cancer actions. I think this is really exciting. Uh, there's a, quite a bit of research showing how GHK copper peptide can help in that area. So I'm, I'm just kind of running through this for you just to give you kind of a big picture overview as to why people are so excited about peptides overall and specifically about GHK copper peptide. This is another um, genetic study with the GHK copper peptide and this particular system that it affects the gene expression here. So you can see there are uh, lots and lots of different changes that will happen with each of these specific um, genes anti-pain, anti-anxiety, anti-aggression. Who does not want that? <laughs> so, so it, and, and the pathways through which the GHK copper is having its effect it, are being studied. And so some of those are, have been, um, uh, looked at here and are reported on here. Here's some more of the, um, studies with specifically with pain again, as an acupuncturist, this is really important to me. It helps, you know, uh, increase the cannabinoid receptors, which is, you know, different than the opioid receptors. So we've got kind of opioid and cannabinoid receptors that are being affected. And uh, when you have kind of both those pathways open, it gives you much, many, many more uh, opportunities to help treat and regulate pain, especially chronic pain. Um, GHK formulation and delivery. And then here's the conclusions about this. But so what I wanted to do in this article what I wanted to do by showing you that article was just get you really excited. So here's something that is already in your body. You can supplement it. You can add, you can do topicals. There's all kinds of things that you can do. There's actually things that you can do to just stimulate, to increase the copper peptide and the activity in your body right now. And then you have the benefits of turning on genes that will help you stay healthy, turn off genes that would make you age more quickly. Uh, stimulate wound healing, decrease pain, decrease inflammation, uh, increase the protective effects that uh, of the peptides that are in your skin, decrease UV damage from sunlight, uh, all the different things that list that I went through that it does for skin and the anti-cancer kind of effects that it has is pretty remarkable. So this is already in your body. Your body's amazing. It has all these healing things that are, are ready to be activated. We just need to find a way to do it and do it in such a way that is consistent and then remove the things that could get in the way of copper peptide. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. I'll put a link to the book down below too, so that you can uh, take a look at that if you want to.